If you're trying to draw your own comics or manga or bon dessiné even, one of the biggest challenges is putting together the concept of story and the finished art, the finished result that actually ends up in the reader's hands. What I want to do in this video is take you behind the scenes into the creation of a page of one of the comic projects that I've been working on recently. In this case, page two of the Star Atlas Core science fiction graphic novel. What I want to talk about specifically in this video is how we take those initial ideas, the mood, the feeling, the stories, the characters, and how that translates to the finished page. So I'll share with you my process for how I go from the idea to the thumbnail, to the rough drawing, to the lines, to the color, just briefly. And I'll also share with you a few of the decisions and things that we actually decided to change about this page in pursuing the goal of the actual story and mood that we wanted to get across. I'll also talk about how the simple style that I use for this comic actually allows me to make some of these creative changes on the fly and why I generally recommend a simple, reliable process for comics and other forms of entertainment design. Anyway, this should be a fun little behind the scenes look at how I go about creating comics. Let's jump in, get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years, much of that drawing comic books, mostly in the French market. And I really started out loving French comics, especially things like Asterix and Tintin and all of those kind of, you know, French, European, Franco-Belgian comics that I could get my hand on. But, you know, when I went to be a professional comic book artist, I also really was drawn to the stories that were in most of the manga that I was reading. And I wanted to be an auteur. I wanted to actually you know, write and draw the stories that, you know, I was making, not just be an artist or a penciler or an inker. And that's why, even though I often talk about creating, you know, comics in the line and color style and I'm working in a European mindset, a lot of the things that I've taken on board from other creators are directly from other markets, such as, again, the manga market, looking at how they go about creating these periodical stories and how they get so much character and emotion into those pages. On this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, which, again, comics is really good for, and embracing the challenge of drawing. Trying to make this fun, even though learning to draw can be a challenge, I think that it can be a fun fun challenge. And we're also about, again, the line and color style and mastering that simple line and color process that, again, you see in so many comics and other great entertainment properties. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color process and style, you can check out my free quick start guide. In it, I go over all of the same techniques and processes and ideas that essentially go into me creating, you know, a professional page of comic art like this. Again, there, the aim is to get you up and running quickly with your own simple, reliable process in Photoshop. That quick start guide is free. Link will be in the description. Go check it out. So, as I said, when I was trying to figure out how to become a comic book professional, become a professional artist of any kind, really, I you know, did a variety of things. I've done concept art for video games, film, animation, etc. And I've also drawn a lot of comic books, um, you know, in, mostly in the French market, where, again, I was the artist and I was working with a script. But I've also done the thing where I am the artist and the writer. And again, that's kind of what I always wanted to do. And I think there's something really, really exciting about doing it that way. And that's really what I want to focus on in this video is the idea of, again, taking a story or a vague idea and translating it into a panel and specifically how we manage mood and all of those little subtle things and how important it can be to make sure that your process allows you to adjust and flow with those changes as you actually kind of take your initial idea, turn it into a finished page of comic book art. Anyway, it's easier to show these things in Photoshop, so let's jump over there. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, the basic process for creating most comics comes with a storyboard or a plan for how we're actually going to lay this out. It's really important in comics, obviously. Now, this is the basic storyboard here for page two. And the way that I create this is really, really simple. I just do it in my sketchbook. And I found that actually can be much more beneficial than trying to do it digitally sometimes because it really allows me to focus 
go somewhere else and there's just something nice and you know very direct about having a pencil paper you can't really mess it up there's nothing else to do and again it kind of forces us to be a little bit more sort of conscious of what we're doing this is the finished page and really what we're trying to do here is just introduce the characters and get across the basic story point of adventure and spacefaring because this is a science fiction comic and a lot of it revolves around the idea of exploration, visiting planets and thinking about again how fun and exciting that might be. But what I want to do quickly is just kind of show you the page that goes before this and the page that goes after that so you can kind of see how they fit within the story. So here we have the first page and what this is talking about is the story of characters flying in a ship, landing on a planet, discovering something amazing and again allows us to connect a little bit with the characters and learn who they are. So there's three main characters in this episode. There's the main character, the human protagonist, Gion. There's his kind of alien friend, Moda, and his sort of robotic artificial intelligence girlfriend, Osea. And they just kind of go on these adventures, right? That's sort of what we're getting at. Trying to learn a little bit about who they are and imagine how exciting it might be to, again, do what they're doing. So the first page just is essentially landing on a planet saying, hey, you know, look at this planet, it's amazing. That would be the sort of, you know, 50,000 foot version of the story. The second page is again, the one we deal with where we are really focusing on, I guess, two main story points. One is to look at the vista of the space exploration. So on the first thing, we're doing an establishing shot, which sort of burdens us with planet and landing on a planet and just saying, hey, there's characters. Here, here are the three characters. We don't really have a chance to do an establishing shot of like what the planet is like. So this is where, again, we land in that first page. Here, we sort of look out and say, what have we got here? What is there? And again, the goal is to show that landing on a planet might be exciting. It would be a great adventure and you might find something interesting. We're also trying to learn about the characters and just kind of get a feel for maybe who they are um, how they relate to each other. So in this case, we have them sort of talking about how it might be good for them to maybe come back here. It might be fun to settle here one day in sort of a, a mobile habitation unit, something like that. And again, you know, the idea that you might be able to fly through space, find a planet you like and kind of settle down there is kind of fun and exciting. Make a little sort of colony. Again, assuming there's no other sort of people on that planet, again, that might be a fun thing to do. Now, the last bit of paneling sort of here down the bottom row is really about them sort of noticing these rocks, right? And starting to hook us onto the next page, which is where we see more of these rocks. And again, we start to discover what they're about. But again, what we're focused on here is that second page where we're dealing with the exploration and looking at that vista and trying to get a feel for what it might be like to discover a planet. So the way that we bridge these ideas is to think about and keep in mind the top level story points that we wanna make. Obviously there's dialogue and there's a lot of sort of nuance that goes into creating a little bit of, you know, sort of a conversation that is its own sort of set of skills. But it's really important to always keep in mind with each page, what is the page about? and how does it relate to the entire story and what's its role? We need to think about this from a mood, um, an emotional standpoint, a story point, and try and sort of combine all these things together. And that really starts with the storyboard. So the storyboard is, again, just a very simple sort of thumbnail version of what's gonna happen. It's important to note here though, that when you are sort of creating everything yourself, there's really no rules or right way to do this. It's all about you thinking through it. And a big part of how you kind of think in terms of comic stories is you just draw a lot of comics and you get better at understanding, you know, the medium and how it works so that you kind of almost begin your imagination and ideation phase in your mind and it becomes easy to put it down in the page on the page in that instance there's obviously a great number of books you could read like scott mcleod's understanding comics is a, is a great one if you're kind of learning the craft but again it can be a messy process to find the right sort of page layout it can just happen you know all in one the more experience you get i guess the more you do the messy stuff in your mind but 
either way, what we have is a thumbnail and an idea for what this page should be in the story. The next thing that I do here is a series of sort of pencils or rough drawings or construction drawings. And that's where I take this storyboard where essentially we have one character, the protagonist Jian talking, and then we have a next uh, panel where it's kind of him talking to the Osea character. And then it's the Osea character sort of listening to him. Then we have the big sort of vista. And then we have their kind of alien friend um, sort of say, hey, you know, let's focus on, you know, the task at hand. And then we kind of see these rocks. And then she kind of says, hey, have you seen these rocks? And that draws us onto the next page. So again, that's the basic story. But at the top level, what we're thinking about is exploration. Who are these characters and how do they relate to each other? In terms of how detailed or rough you want your construction drawing or your pencil phase to be, that's totally up to you. You can look at a lot of the process um, you know, videos I have on this channel where I do illustrations from start to finish. And it's essentially the same process that I would use for that and also for the quick start guide. A lot of it depends on how much you need to complete the finished set of lines. Often in the start of a project, again, I pencil and do construction drawings a little bit tighter because I'm not quite as confident about the characters or the environment. As I get more confident with them, these drawings might become a little bit rougher or looser um, because again, it's a lot easier to do those final lines and finish those details on the go. But either way, you can see most of it is here. It's essentially just that thumbnail with more detailed anatomy. And what I'm starting to think about here is foreground, middle ground background for those scenic shots. And you just tighten up the anatomy, nail the expressions and see how the dialogue plays with those expressions so that I can get a feeling for what it's actually going to look like when we kind of have both of these things going at the same time. I'll do a separate video some other time talking about, again, the general sort of your know, specific process for storyboarding. But it's important to note that, again, one of the things I think is really good about European sort of uh, Franco-Belgian comics and manga is that, you know, it really seemed like the, the author of the work is often very, very heavily involved in the actual word balloons, laying those out and making them a part of the art. So that's something that, you know, I make sure I do in this initial penciling phase. I put the balloons in there and I make sure that they are a part of the art, they're compositionally considered, and that actually helps me to draw the expressions because I can sort of tweak those expressions and see how they actually work with the words that that character is going to say in that panel. Now, once I'm ready to do the finished lines, essentially, I take that idea of foreground, middle ground, background for all of the different things like characters, the environment, you know, things that are meant to be in the sky. And I just kind of separate them onto their own layers. So one of the things you kind of notice is that, you know, many of these things uh, you know, drawn on completely separate layers, right? So these foreground elements with all the rocks are on their own layer. The, you know, sort of middle foreground is on its own layer. And this is actually quite easy to do digitally. It's very easy to just, you know, sort of put everything on separate layers. It actually makes the drawing of it a little bit easier because you can erase things and you don't have to worry so much about um, you know, sort of all of the lines meeting, you can, you know, just do a lot of things. It, it, it's actually a lot easier once you get used to it. It's a little bit alien in the beginning, but I find this um, gives me a lot of creative opportunities later on. Then we kind of just put in the middle ground and all of those background elements. And again, this allows me to very, very quickly select all those different areas out and create, if we sort of go here, some sort of flat versions of those. And as you can see, right, if we look at the middle ground here, right, all of these things are on separate layers and you can move them around. You can check out the basic way I work in the quick start guide or any of the other sort of videos on the channel that, you know, deal with very, very similar Photoshop techniques. But it really is just a matter of taking that one idea and just repeating it, right? So let's have things on layer. You want your character and your background on a separate layer. It's pretty obvious to understand how that's beneficial. You know, you can paint the cat, the background behind the character. All we're doing is just taking that and doing it 10 times, right? Wouldn't it be good to have these foreground elements in front of those foreground elements, in front of those other middle ground elements, in front of those other middle ground elements that are in front of the characters that are in, etc. right? It's the, it's the simplest thing. 
And as I always say, that's often what we're doing with uh, comics and sort of professional work is we're just taking a very simple idea and repeating it and just making sure that, again, you know, we put our best foot forward and do all the basic things right. So this is what the finished page looks like. And again, what we have is the idea of these characters being romantically intertwined. Um, we start to introduce, you know, the idea of what that might be like. Again, is it normal for characters to be in a relationship with, uh, again, an artificial intelligence being? Um, you know, is it normal for aliens and humans to be friends? These are all fairly standard science fiction tropes, but often your job when you're starting a project like this is to define how all of those norms are actually going to work within your specific world. It's often those subtle choices that make a big difference later on. Now, from a color perspective and a few other little edits that were made to this that you might have been able to see now, we actually changed a few things along the way in terms of the overall mood and how that affected the story. So one of the things that we wanted to do is kind of make these sort of rocks um, a real sort of feature, right? Something you'd obviously notice because, um, again, that's just important from a graphic standpoint. So I kind of made them sort of bright red, bright pink. Uh, because that's really useful, right? It makes us see them as well. And, um, you know, that was something that was a little bit toned down earlier on. So I'll show you what the page looked like initially. So this is what it looked like in the beginning. I did the first sort of color grade. And the way that I tend to like to do this is by, and you can see some of the dialogue takes tweaks as well as we sort of progress through this. What I tend to do, and again, this is, the same thing that I'm often talking about where we have a simple reliable process and it allows us to do edits and adjust the sort of subtleties that actually might affect the way the reader is feeling um, or the way people respond to what you're actually doing. So I kind of create the flat colors pretty you know, in a pretty basic way and then what I do after that is again add some subtlety and then think about the color grade right like how's it going to feel so in this case we went for something that was a little bit more alien I was trying to say well wouldn't it be exciting again if you stepped onto a planet and the planet really felt like nothing you could experience on earth right it's kind of these blues and pinks and purples and it's a little bit sort of desolate right again that to me kind of feels like you know what a science fiction planet should be um, but I think what we ended up doing is actually kind of saying, hey, you know, I think that works, but a lot of people actually associate the sense of adventure with kind of forests and greenery and, you know, like kind of tweaking those things might be useful. So we kind of went from this kind of real alien landscape, just from a color perspective to the sort of final form, which was, uh, again, as you can kind of see here, a little bit more sort of green. And this actually was done for a number of reasons, but again, I think it actually kind of works to, to make it feel more relatable as a place that the characters might actually want to go. This is where, again, it's so easy to lose your initial intent and the specific feeling that you want to get because, again, what I was focused on there was let's make it look like an alien landscape, right? And then you do that and it's a matter of saying, well, is that actually the feeling that I wanted to get across in my initial idea? Um, it's important to be able to step back and then also have methods in your process to edit those things so that, again, when you come back to it and maybe it doesn't quite feel right, someone else kind of gives you some feedback. Again, in this case, it was Danny Floyd, who's kind of the, the product officer for this whole project. And he was just kind of saying, well, you know, like maybe it, would be, maybe it would be better if people could relate to it a bit more because that would make it feel as if exploring these planets might be a little bit more inviting, right? And one of the other things we did was remove this big sort of foreground element there. So you notice in the storyboard um, and, and everything up until this point, if you can find the, the storyboard there, right? The storyboard had this uh, sort of foreground element here. Uh, the pencils had the foreground element here. And this kind of grade here had the foreground element. But uh, yeah, we sort of decided to get rid of that because this kind of made that page feel or that panel feel less claustrophobic and it made it feel more like, you know, you're, you're stepping out to this giant vista and you could imagine, you know, living there, which is kind of what they're sort of thinking. Like, 
you know, this would be somewhere you like. And, you know, that's often one of the most exciting things about going on holiday, you know, go on holiday to some amazing place. And, you know, you kind of think about, wouldn't it be good if I could live here? I could just kind of sit here and look at this view, right? So again, it's that idea um, of trying to, you know, sort of balance all of those things with both the color grade and again, having things on separate layers so you can delete them and focus on story. So in the end, we ended up with a much sort of warmer, more inviting feeling of what going to a planet might be. And this ties together with the idea of the characters having this romantic relationship. And again, it allows us to kind of, um, again, break that feeling of, you know, this planet being inviting in some of the later pages. Because again, another part of story is being out of control the expectation so often in the beginning of a story you have one thing happening as you progress again that sort of thing often flips on its head so again the planet ends up being you know spoiler alert not very exciting and the romantic relationship you know is 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 sort of destroyed and what we're doing is sort of making a counterpoint here with these panels to those later panels and all of those things have to be considered as a whole anyway that's it for this little walkthrough hopefully that was interesting again just a little bite-sized explanation of sort of you know the things that i go through when i'm working on a page day in day out and for me again a really good sort of highlight of how important i have found using a simple reliable process to be it's why i often talk about this and i often talk about how important focusing on the story and what you're drawing is versus kind of all those technical things I think that if you have a reliable process that is sort of editable, it's one of the reasons I still use Photoshop and I still think it's kind of relevant here. It's a lot easier to kind of, you know, lay out a whole bunch of pages, look at them all next to each other, make little tweaks. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of handle that many layers with a proper sort of PC workstation. It's when, again, why I actually enjoy, I like working, you know, on a, you know, sort of traditional PC versus an iPad or something like that. They both can do the same thing, but um, yeah, I find that it's a lot easier for me to focus on what I think is important when I can kind of, again, have a bunch of stuff up and, and kind of really think about it. One of the biggest challenges that I think we face when we start drawing something like comics and taking on this challenge, especially when it's your project that you're imagining, um, one of the biggest things that I'd run into is that I, I'd have these ideas in the beginning and they would be sort of really sort of aspirational ideas and I'd have very specific thoughts about the mood and the subtlety and all those little bits and pieces and they'd often get lost in the run up to completing the page. I kind of get to the finished thing and go, oh man, you know, <laughs> I, I kind of missed that, right? It, it sort of got lost in translation. And I think, again, the things that will aid you in this are having a process that's kind of worked out. Again, just sort of doing it a lot, doing a lot of reps, repeating these stages, getting comfortable with it. But again, as I said, having a, a non-linear process, something where you can adjust colors, where things are separated onto layers. These can be very technical um, challenges in the beginning to kind of get all this stuff working, but it really is pretty simple. And I think it allows you to make these creative choices later on and actually make sure that the most important thing is happening, which is that your vision is kind of making it onto the page. And you can tweak that and you can edit that. When you're just working on a simple illustration, it's easy to kind of, you know, take it in one way or another. But with comics, there's so many different panels, so many different pages. I find that being able to edit and think about these stories from that sort of 50,000 foot view is really, really important. And again, being able to have things on layers, really, really useful if you're working with other people and you might get feedback where someone's like, hey, let's just take out this giant foreground element. Um, it's a lot easier when you have these types of processes set up in the beginning. Anyway, that's it for this one. Let me know if you found this little sort of walkthrough interesting. Uh, if you've got any questions or other things you'd like me to sort of cover with this kind of, you know, professional comic book process, be more than happy to share. I've got a lot of other things sort of planned for in a, in a similar vein, walking through these ideas. But again, if you've got anything you'd particularly like to see, just let me know in the comments below. I'll see you there. Apart from that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.